something that a book, something that a school could never have taught me, life taught me. I wake up happy as fire, thank God I'm still alive. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm six Booker T, six time world champ, two time Hall of Fame. <laughs> Got my man Brad Gilmore here with me as always, man. If y'all if y'all don't know this, man, if y'all can't know this, I'm tired. I'm tired, <laughs> man. It's been, it's been WrestleMania week, and uh, and if you guys don't know about WrestleMania week, it's a monster, bro. It's a monster, but it's the most exciting week in the of the year. I'm, I'm serious. I mean, it's like a buzz, and then to see all the uh, you know familiar faces and then all the new faces man what a what a week it was man but i'm serious man i'm tired but uh bradley how you feel man i just how, how you how you holding up you know i'm i'm in a similar boat as you um i uh let's see i woke up this morning yeah, at i yeah. guess four o'clock houston time to get back to the uh to get back to the city you know what i mean and um I'm, I'm, but you know what you, Wrestle- you, what you think is you still should be running off adrenaline you know what I mean? I am. See, I came in yesterday, and um, I got a full night's rest, and and I think it's it's just still seep, seeping in. You know what I mean? It's like, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm serious. It's like it's like something I've never uh, experienced before, as far as how tired I am right now. And and I don't know if it's because I'm just getting, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm getting too old for this, man. I'm, too, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Are you just Danny saying. Lover? I'm like, I'm like Danny Glover, man. I'm, I'm getting too old for this stuff, man. But uh, like I say, it was it was uh, definitely exciting, especially Stand to Deliver. Uh, Stand to Deliver, man. It was so freaking exciting, and, and I must say the uh, the match with uh, uh, Josh Briggs and Dijak and Oba Femi, man, that match, man, that match brought it. It brought that match brought it, man. It, it, but for the for the fact that uh, Oba Oba is so green, you know he he didn't look like a a, a kid in the, in the ring at all. He didn't look like a a guy that was you know just starting out. He he looked like the North American champion in that matchup, man. You know, so I say, man, uh, everybody everybody uh, from top to bottom went out there and stand to deliver, and and they delivered, man. I, I must say, big ups to to the roster, big ups to Shawn Michaels. Uh, man, uh, what a show. What a show. Yeah, I mean, I, I took in a lot of wrestling this week. And, you know, I went to Friday Night SmackDown. I was there for the Hall of Fame, saw Stand and Deliver, night one, night two of WrestleMania. Um, I will say, as tired as I probably will be after the, the conclusion of this broadcast today, a minute. Yeah. It, 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 was, it, was, it was a really good time, man. I mean, the Hall of Fame, I actually want to start there real quick just to see I, I thought, you know, obviously Paul Heyman had, you know, a very Paul Heyman esque speech and he he spoke like only he can and used a lot of colorful language like only he can. Uh, but there was a lot of talk throughout the entire night of a new era of WWE. And that persisted throughout um the last several nights 
You know, you even saw Stephanie McMahon go out there at WrestleMania and declare it the Paul Levesque era. And it's a new era. It's a new era. I want to ask you, do you feel like we've officially entered into a new era in professional wrestling and especially WWE with the um, consistent sellouts, with you know NXT posting its highest uh, crowd ever over the weekend, the biggest box office ever of WrestleMania, Monday Night Raw last week set an all-time domestic gate, and tonight they're about to crush that number that they did last week. Do you feel like we're officially in a new era? Yeah, it's a tough question, um, but it, I, I can say this: it feels different. You know, we we're definitely in a different time, and and the business has, has evolved from what it was to what it is now. Um, if it is the uh, you know Paul Levesque era, you know, let's let's get it going. You know, what I mean, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna ride as long as I as long as I possibly can. But it does, it does definitely feels different. I, I can say that. It definitely has a different feel. And, you know, I know Triple H is not fond of the term the Paul Levesque era, as he pointed out last night. And I think he wants <laughs> a different name put on it. I'm starting to call it the XL era, you know, because it was WrestleMania XL last night. And it feels like everything is extra large recently in WWE. Everything's bigger. Everything's more enormous. Everything's more over the top. Even the main event of WrestleMania Night 2, which we'll get to, was over the top. And so I'm calling it the XL era, but let's go back to the Hall of Fame because I want to say there was a few speeches that stuck out for me, but um, aside from Paul Heyman, I really enjoyed the Thunderbolt Patterson induction a lot. Um, I thought that that was a really, you know, I, and I want to give props to the New Day for their induction speech, which I thought was really well done and done in the vein of a Thunderbolt Patterson. I know you and the Queen were put on camera a lot during his speech and you were looking forward most, I, I believe you said on the show, to seeing him go in, um, what did you think of the Thunderbolt induction, and, and did it hit? Did it hit you? Did you feel it? Oh man, uh, we went to church, <laughs> of course, uh, with Thunderbolt Patterson. Uh, I got a chance to uh, you know chat with Thunderbolt Patterson at the hotel for a minute um, as well, and uh, that was that was that was more awesome, more awesome than the Hall of Fame for me. Um, to see Thunderbolt Patterson actually make that walk, you know, get up out of that wheelchair and make that walk. He said, man, I'm standing up on this stage. Man, I'm going to show him that I still got it, you know. Um, nah, it was a, it was a touching moment for me because Thunderbolt paved the way for, you know, you know guys like me, you know, guys that look like me. And um, I, I know that he didn't have it as easy as I did. I know his route was much, much tougher than my route was, you know, so for, for me to actually be sitting there and watching Thunderbolt Patterson, which was one of the reasons, of course, with, along with Paul Heyman was, you know, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure I was at the Hall of Fame. Um, it was definitely um, an experience for me um, to be in the room with Thunderbolt Patterson, one of the greatest of all time, one of the greatest that ever did it, one of the, the brothers that really, uh, like I say, paved the way for me. Yeah, I know. Um, you know, in the in the video package that you were in for the Thunderbolt induction, it you know you talked about how he couldn't sleep in the same city that he, you know, wrestled in that night, and to see um him go in was was very special. But um, I, I guess should we go right into Stand and Deliver? Do you want to talk more about Stand and Deliver? Sure. Because I sure. felt like there was a lot we on start? there. I I want to start with the Wolf Dogs and Axiom and Nathan Frazier. I mean. What a great way to start a, a show with the, with an awesome tag team match. Man, what a match. Um, I was reading that uh, Braun Breaker may have rang his bail um, a little bit um, in that match. Um, couldn't couldn't really tell. Um, he was there you know, to the end. Uh, but I tell you, uh, Nathan Fraser and Axiom, they brought it, man. They brought it. I mean, they, they didn't look out of place at all. I mean, if they would have won that tag, tag team championship, it just would have been a hell of a match. That's all it would have been. It would have been an upset or anything like that because those guys definitely truly look like they belonged um, in that ring. And um, Baron Carbon, of course, I feel like he's doing some of his best work. And then to uh, add, you know, Brun Breaker uh, to that mix, someone who's already been drafted to the main roster but is still patient enough to, you know, uh, want to finish this thing and finish it properly. You know what I mean? So – Oh, what a match. What a what a tag team championship match. 
Yeah, and and talk about you know Braun because he definitely seems main roster ready. Like at least as far as you know what what I see, I feel like it's I feel like it's probably getting close to that time for him to make that next step. Do you feel like he's there? Do you do you selfishly or unselfishly think he should re remain in NXT because I know he's such a big part of that show? Man, I'd love to see him stay in NXT for a little while longer, but. Like you said, I feel like he's ready for the main roster as well. Uh, I mean, it's just kind of like um, torn, you know, between the two. But I do feel like, um, you know, he's he's main roster ready. But, you know, uh, the work that he's doing in NXT right now is some of his best work. It really is, man. I mean, it's, it's um, you know, his level of, uh, you know, where his, comf his comfort level right now, it seems like he is so comfortable performing in the middle of that ring, going out there, doing the stuff off the top rope or the, you know, Frankensteiners, whatnot. And I'm like, man, this kid is uh, um, evolving. He's he's maturing right before our very eyes. So, yeah, yeah. Um, would I, you know, you know, want to see him stay? Of course. But uh, would I be sad to see him go? You know, of course not, man. These guys got to, they got to shine. They got to move on. We got to take a break, though. We got to take a break. Hey, guys, you're in the Hall of Fame. Stick around. We'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Dig it, sucker. sucker. And this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about sex. Hey, you remember when you was always ready to go? I'm talking about strapping the rocket on it, man. Going straight to the moon. I'm talking about getting it done. If you want that extra confidence, I got something for you. Listen up, Blue Chew. Dot com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at the fraction of the cost. But the great thing, Book, is you can take it any time, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, guys, is all done online on the internet. So there's no doctor's visit, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at a pharmacy or any of that. And the thing is, book, Blue Chew's tablets, they're made right here in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package so no one is the wiser. You know, let's just get it out there, guys. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. It, it's like this. Chew it and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew absolutely free when you use promo code Booker at your checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping, man. That's BlueChew.com. Use promo code Booker to receive your first month absolutely free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And, you know, we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the Hall of Fame podcast. Do it and do it. Boom. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, man. We're talking a little WrestleMania as well as Stand and Deliver went down this weekend. And I must say, they delivered. They delivered <laughs> uh, as they have been doing it as of late. I've been telling people to sit back and wait, see how this thing play out. We, 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 we don't want to try to write the story uh, no book to show or anything like that. Let's just sit back and watch how I play. I, I'll be damn, man. They, another one uh, in the books, uh, I, I, I would say. Let me ask you about a couple more things on Stand and Deliver before we talk about WrestleMania because obviously people want to talk about the new WWE champion, Cody Rhodes, and, and we're going to obviously get to the finishing of his story in a two-night saga that was uh, – the term cinematics thrown around a lot, but I think it's apropos for, for the two nights that we just saw at WrestleMania. But Roxanne Perez, Lyra Valkyria, Roxanne, obviously, we both have an affinity for being that she's a reality wrestling original. You trained her. She went out and captured the NXT Women's Championship for the second time in this new iteration of her uh, persona, we shall say. What did you think of Roxanne and Lyra Valkyria? Man, what a match. What a match um, to um, see Roxanne Perez, you know, grow right before my very eyes, mature right before my very eyes, be able to transform as well. 
you know, from babyface to heel and do it almost effortlessly. Uh, it just let me know that, you know, all the training, you know, everything that we've talked about over, over the years, as well as we still talk about it, we still talk about the training. <laughs> you know, that's what's crazy is uh, at NXT, you know, she's still that student wanting to know, you know, what she did right, uh, if she did something wrong. You know, what did that promo look like? How did that promo feel? And I'm like, man, you, I'm like, you're getting it. I'm like, you're getting it. You know, and now I'm at that point to where I, I got to say, man, you got it. That's what I got to say about Roxanne Perez right now, man. She's got it. She's got it all, man. She's got the full package, you know, to to be able to perform, you know, at the next level. And, and the thing is, she's not the biggest person, you know, in the ring or anything like that most of the times. But just like Shawn Michaels, she projected she project herself so much bigger than she actually is do do uh do through her performance and i'm like man uh, and i can't take any anything away from Lyra valkyria either because i only just been watching her for about um what a year and four months or something like that and um to watch the growth of Lyra valkyria to now has been like unbelievable she's uh, when she first came in the door she was a really really good worker but it seemed like she's totally honed it in to where now she's almost flawless in the middle of the ring you know so i give vicaria um, big props too because it takes two to tango um and to be able to pull off a match of that magnitude with two people so young that's the that's the thing right there both of those guys are so young and they went out there and had a hell of a match Big props uh, to Roxanne Perez becoming a new champion. New champ, two time, two time. She just needs three more wins to so she can adopt the five time. Would you bequeath her the five time? Would you give that to her? Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Um, two more matches from Santa Deliver that I definitely want to make sure that we highlight. I mean, you talked about that triple threat match that was awesome. Um, the Ilya Dragunov and Tony D for the NXT Championship. Uh, do you think the right person one because the crowd I felt wanted to see Tony D be the NXT champion because honestly this is what I want to say if you look at the NXT 2.0 era you know when they went away from the original black and gold and went to that multicolor era and the show was different and it was changed you know Tony D has been one of those standout performers not so much just for what he does inside the squared circle but for the vignettes the character pieces the promos he has been a constant in that NXT 2.0 era into this new era of NXT, as we're calling it. Um, I think a lot of people want to see the Don go out there and, and really be the, the godfather of NXT with the championship around his waist. Do you feel like the right man won, and what did you think of the match? What a match. Man, what a match. Tony D brought it. I mean, he brought everything, man. Uh, the part I liked was... Uh, you know, Stax pulling out the brass knuckles. Yeah. And Stax said, nah. I mean, uh, Tony said, nah. I'm going I'm to I'm take care of this piece of business. I don't need, I'm not going to do it that way. That right there just, that just added a little bit to the story for me um, as far as, you know, what Tony T, what Tony D is all about being a stand up OG. You know what I mean? Being a stand up, you know, um, you know, uh, boss. And, you know, if, if, if it's, if, if I got, if, if somebody get, need to get the job done, I'll get the job done. It's what it's one of those type of deals, you know. So I loved it, you know. I'll put I'll put the head out on the guy myself. <laughs> it's like it's, it's one of those type of deals, you know. So for me, uh, Tony D brought it, man, and uh, I got a chance to talk to him at the hotel um, for a minute, and um, I was just telling him how great of a job that him and Ilya Dragunov did. Easily uh, uh, could have been uh, or should have been. The main, the main event. Um, that's just the way I look at that match, just because it was that compelling. The story behind that match was so, so compelling. Um, but both of those guys went out there and did a hell of a job. Now, the main event, though, of the show was Carmelo Hayes and Trick Williams. Uh, Trick Williams gets the gets the one, two, three in a grudge match and really had the Philadelphia crowd behind him, man. He had the crowd behind him. I mean, standing there, on the, uh, what is that, you know, the the barricade, standing up there and, and going like this and the whole crowd going, whoop, that trick. Now, I was in the building and I didn't get to hear the commentary, but I could still hear the commentary. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> during, yeah, the, yeah. during the Trick Williams intro, I saw you were having a little fun with uh, 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 Wade Barrett during that time. Was Wade yeah, trying yeah. to get some ad libs in? He just wanted to get uh, one shamon in. That's you want to get a shamon in? Did just he get one, it in? Just, I, he, he couldn't find the, the rhythm or the timing. Even though it was right there in front of him, all he had to do was just jump in. He just kept bobbing and missed it. You know what I mean? It is one of those type of deals, <laughs> but, but it's all good. Now, uh, uh, of course, Trick Williams victorious, and you had your own battle at NXT, though. You had a battle with Knuckles. Knuckles and, and you seemed like y'all had some beef. There were a lot of memes going around of you and Knuckles from NXT. Do you have anything you want to say to Knuckles? I had no beef with Knuckles other than Knuckles getting in my business, uh, being in, the, in my eyesight. That was about it. You know what I mean? Dapping it up with Vic, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. You know, involving himself in with business that don't concern him could get him in a lot of trouble. That's the only thing, that's the only problem I had with Knuckles. Okay. Are you telling me you put it you put it on Knuckles if he tried you? Oh yes. Oh yes. I put the <laughs> knuckles on it. Put the put the put the hands on it. <laughs> put the hands on Knuckles. I I'd never seen so many like memes instantly get made within an hour. Are you serious? Where, you didn't see any of the Knuckles memes? No, I didn't even. They well, were all over the place. You know place. what I did, man? I tried to stay, you know, other than a couple of times, I tried to stay off social media this whole week. I tried Why is to, that? Just so you could take it in and not? Well, I just, wanna, I, I just didn't want to I just didn't want to see any, you know, neg negative, you know, comments um, or anything like that. I didn't want to see. I just I just want to stay away from, you know, the, the noise. So I literally stayed away from X the whole week. You know, I haven't I haven't looked at any of X, the whole, you know, in the last, you know, four or five days, you know, just because I don't know why. Um, it just um, the world is just crazy right now. And I just wanted to wrestle. I just wanted this weekend to be one of those weekends where, you know, I got through it, has, had as much fun as I possibly could. could. Uh, my, my son, man, he had like so much fun, man, Kendrick. He's like, man, on, on top of the world. And my daughter, man, she had such an awesome time. My wife, she had a great time. Mom, everybody had a great time, you know. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, you know, feel that. I just wanted to have that feeling, you know, going into WrestleMania as well as coming out of WrestleMania. I met so many cool people um, at Mania, um, at WrestleCon, um, at the hotel. I met so many freaking cool people. Um I met this one guy, he had this shirt on, it was a shirt, it was a silhouette of me, and it had one title, the heavyweight championship and the United States championship on one arm, and he, he said he met me when he was 13 years old, and it was a crowd of people around, and uh, he didn't get a chance to shake my hand, he's like, you know, like yell my name, and, and I, I, I looked back, and I came back to him, and you know, shook his head and whatnot, and he said, man, I remember that, to the day, to the day I died, he lifted his shirt up, and he had that shirt on, he's like, man, this is you, man, this is you, man, I represent you, man, and I was like, that's so, that's so freaking awesome, man, so I just wanted to have, I just wanted that. You know, like I said, at Russell Cunn, I met so many people. I know we got to take a break. At Russell Cunn, I met so many people. And everybody that came up to me, I would ask them, hey, man, where you from? You know, and like out of the two hours I was I was there, only five people was from the United States. Whoa, really? Everybody else was from overseas, somewhere, this, that, what, not the other, man. I was like, wow, man, this is so freaking awesome. I want that for reality of wrestling. I want to be able to have an event like that for reality of wrestling. I want people to come to Texas and celebrate professional wrestling like that one day. And that's what we're building. That's what we're working on uh, with reality of wrestling. So, but, but guys, we got to take another break. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. What's up, y'all? It's your man, Booker T, six-time world champion, two-time Hall of Famer, and I'm here with my main man, Brad Gilmore, on the Hall of Fame podcast. And today, we're talking about something that's been a game-changer for us, and that's HelloFresh. That's right, Booker. Whether you're looking to save money, eat better, or stress less in the new year, HelloFresh has got you covered. We're talking about farm-fresh ingredients, chef-crafted recipes, and the best part, it's all delivered right to your doorstep. 
You know, Brad, I used to stress about meal planning, especially with my busy schedule. But with HelloFresh, man, I'm whipping up quick, tasty meals in no time. And my favorite has got to be their 15-minute recipes. Man, who knew I could cook a gourmet meal that fast? Absolutely, Book. But let's talk about variety. HelloFresh has over 45 dinner options each week. So that's right. There's going to be no more recipe boredom. Plus, they've got calorie smart and protein smart options. Perfect for keeping those New Year's resolutions in check. And you know, Brad, as a family man, I'm sitting down for dinner with my crew and it's important. Hello, fresh, quick and easy meals have made that reality. Even on the busiest nights, it's just convenient. It's bringing the family together. And don't forget, breakfast fans, HelloFresh is hooking you up, the listeners of the Hall of Fame podcast, with free breakfast for life. That's right, a free breakfast item with every delivery. Now, that's a sweet deal to wake up to. Y'all heard it here first. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Booker Free and use the code, man, Booker Free, to get your free breakfast for life. Remember, one breakfast item per box while your subscription is active. Oh, yeah, man. That's HelloFresh.com slash Booker Free with the code Booker Free. Don't miss out on America's number one meal kit. Join us in making cooking fun, easy, and absolutely delicioso. It's HelloFresh. You got it. Oh, yeah. Can you dig it, sucker? It's time to get your champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Welcome. Inside the Hall of Fame. Boom. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, man. We're just talking a little stand and deliver, man. But we're just talking about reality of wrestling as well. But 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 before we even get going, before we get moving any further, reality wrestling is going down April 13th, this Saturday night, uh, in the main event, Kenny King versus one Matt Cart. Donut, the king of the Indies. It's already sold out, guys. It's already sold out. I think we got some general admission tickets uh, that we have, have put out. I don't know if they're gone, but we will have standing room only, man. Uh, so, guys, uh, make sure, sure you get in there. 9300 Emmett F. Lowry Expressway. The Walker, Texas Lawyer Arena, man. You don't want to miss out. You don't want to get shut out because it's going down Saturday night. And guess what? It's going to be a lot of bells and whistles, too. It's going to be a whole lot of surprises that you do not want to miss out on. Like I said, I can't wait to uh, Reality of Wrestling have its first Romania. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yes. Well, you know what? It's probably going to happen sooner than we all realize with the with the fire that's lit under Reality of Wrestling right now. Stand and Deliver, though, book, it was awesome. It was incredible. Um, was, there, was there anything else you want to mention on that show before we move on to WrestleMania? Um, we, did, we not... um, did we talk Trick? Um, oh, Mello. Trick Mellow. Trick Mellow main event. I, yeah, I started, yeah. I got diverted fr from Knuckles. So, yeah, yeah. Trick Mellow main event. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, my boys, they went out there and rocked it. They went out there and rocked it, but I, I must say they had a lot of stiff competition. They had a lot of competition on that show to compete with. And um, being in that main event slot, man, you got to go out there. You got to go out there and bring it. You got to bring the noise. Um, but one thing I must say, the fans, uh, the fans don't only determine if you uh, gave them what they wanted to see. And at the end of the night, I must say, Trick Bello, the fans were happy. You know what I mean? They, they were, they were uh, happy to see Trick Williams go out there and get the victory. Um, I haven't been on social media or anything like that. So I don't even know what the consensus is as far as, you know, match rating or anything like that. You may know. Have you been, you know, seeing any? Um, no, I haven't know. seen any ratings for, for it, but I'm sure yeah. I can find it. Yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying go look for it. But I was just wondering, you know, if, you know, I haven't, heard any, I haven't heard any backlash. Have you? I haven't heard any backlash. No, I haven't. Any you know negative you know views? I I well I mean other than you know and I and look the event was great. I mean some people were saying that perhaps it shouldn't have gone on last. Did anybody at the press conference bring it up? Uh no I don't I, no not that I know of. And them some weak I... ass journalists in in these press conferences. I'm serious. I'm serious. I mean I know you was among them, but uh... I'm not I'm not the weak ass journalist. <laughs> 
Look, man, I needed the I needed the the, the parking to uh, open up a little bit. It's hard to get out of there. I might as well sit and hang out. Shout oh out to my, my boy God. Van Vliet. We sat there and as, as uh and, and watched it. But no, 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 no. There was no questions about why. Did you see something? No, no, no. I was just wondering. You know, it seemed like you know when you know you're in, the, in that kind of a uh, you know setting um, with a lot of people who there's feel like they're really, really knowledgeable. They have certain questions that they want to ask. It seemed like that would have been one of the questions that would have came up from a journalist perspective. Perhaps. Perhaps it should have. Perhaps yeah. it should have. I don't know. But I think Stand and Deliver overall was great. Um, Knocked it out of the park. I feel like I feel like Stand and Deliver, man, it was a it was a as far as as far as I'm concerned, on the scale of one to ten, it was a ten. You that's said, how yeah. good that's how good that show really was from top to bottom. Even the hot shot at six, um, you know, uh, person tag match. You know, it was uh, it was it was definitely it was still good. It was still a hot mm -hmm. match. You know, from the beginning to the end, um, it was it had you know flavor. And um, so for me, uh, it stand and deliver. Man, they knocked it out of the park. No, I'm I'm right there with you. I enjoyed it, and you know how I know it was good. It, like. When you go to a wrestling show and there was what, like six or seven matches on there, maybe eight, seven. seven. Yeah. Um, when it goes by quick, and, and when you when you're like, wait, where are we at the main event? Yeah, that's how you know you were enjoying it the entire time. And I enjoyed Stand and Deliver so much. I think that was my first NXT Premium Live event I've been to, and um, what what a one to attend because it's the highest selling, most attended NXT show yeah. of all time. Oh, it you know six, what? It was sixteen thousand. Yeah. Hold on, and I got to do one more thing before we move on to WrestleMania. Shout out to Metaphor. I like Metaphor as the host, man. I thought they were great. I like the little skits in the back and the vignettes that they did and the, the wardrobe changes and the costume changes. They just brought a little entertainment factor to the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. I feel, this, I feel that way, too. I mean, no, I'm Dar. He, he's really good. He's, he's uh, what wrestling is, you know, as far as a guy that can go out there and just, you know, act as stupid as he wants. He can make fun of, you know, everything that's going on. But then when, when the bell ring, Norm Dar, he's one of the best, man. He's, he's definitely truly one of the best that we have in NXT right now. Uh, and I'm, you know, putting him in my fave five for the week. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and just, just put him in there at number one, uh, Norm Dar, uh, fave five. Boom. There you go. Well, I think though now, it's time to move on to WrestleMania XL, WrestleMania 40, which um, was a chilly, chilly first night there at WrestleMania, man. I mean, it was cold. It was a little too cold for me. I'll be honest with you. Can we? I'm going to advocate, and I know WWE listens to every suggestion we make. I'm trying to advocate no more, and I'm sorry my East Coast people, but no more East Coast WrestleMania. What is Come on, man. Well, Come on, well, man. It's just too cold. It. They talk about Minnesota next year. That's what, yeah, that's a rumor. Nothing's confirmed, but that's what they're saying. Minnesota's, man, they already spent money for the, they, 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 bought, they spent the big ticket, <laughs> you know, so we, we go into Minnesota, you know what I mean? So you might as well get ready. Well, like, okay, look, 35 was in New York. You remember how cold it was that year? You know, the year you and your brother went in the hole. Yeah. It was freezing out there. And that yeah. was one of the longest shows I've ever been to in my life. It was like eight hours. Um, freezing. And then, let's see, 36, there was no one there. 37 was in Florida, southern climate, okay? 38 was Dallas, southern climate. 39 was L.A. It's L.A., man. It's the West Coast. You can't get any better than that. And then you want to go to Philly. No disrespect to my people in Philly or Minnesota, but come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Let it one be warm about WWE, a little bit. WWE has always catered to the cold cities, man. I don't know why. It's just always been that way. Ever since I came from WCW, I always wondered what was the system. You know what I mean? When there's so many warm climate cities that we can go to and do the same thing and make the same money, uh, it seemed like they, they have to give those cold cities that same amount of love. And and I always, I swear to God, when, uh, when I was in WCW, I used to say, man, I'm never going to WWE just because they work too many cold cities. <laughs> it, 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 those were the reasons I stayed at. You know, I, was, I stuck it out so long because I did not want to go and have to work those cold cities. And, once I got there, I realized, man, it was true about what they said about WWE. They worked the cold cities at the coldest times of the year because those people need something to do. And um, that's their get out, you know, for, for the year is going to see WWE. It's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see people in the chat saying Minnesota's uh, st- stadium is enclosed, right? All right. I, no, I mean uh, it's it. They say it's they say it's indoor, but I still got to get there from the outdoor, right? Yeah, <laughs> like but, I still you know, walk with, with the thing. stadium being um, you know closed, that makes it a lot better, though. That makes it a lot better. Just it these does outdoor, make it better. These outdoor stadiums, you know, especially for you know people coming from you know like people like places like Houston, you know, places like Florida. Louisiana, uh, I mean, they get cold. You know what I mean? They get cold in these outside stadiums, man. You know what I mean? Because we used to domes. You know, we, I mean, we used to, you know, get out in the cold with no shirt on, you know, run, yeah. <laughs> who ride, you know? I'm, I'm like, haven't these fools heard of a roof? Every time I see <laughs> these guys, man, at the football games, you know, it's, it's literally be, below zero and they got no shirt on and they're <laughs> off into it. You know, I don't a certain get type that. of individual. I don't get that. You know what I mean? Uh, Kansas City, same way, you know what I mean? Uh, but uh, nah, man, uh, I definitely would uh, rather any place other than Minnesota, but I'm sure um, we're going there. <laughs> I, could almost, <laughs> I, I would almost bet oh, we're going to Minnesota. And, just, because know, nothing, it's, just, just because it's wrestling country. You know, it's it so is many, a big wrestling city. So many great wrestlers, collegiate, collegiate wrestlers um, have come out of the great state of Minnesota. It's, it's, it's one of those places that we... We just got to go just because of nostalgia purposes, I, I would think, you know, so I, I, I see uh, that being uh, highly uh, plausible that we will be going to <laughs> Minnesota and doing uh, that thing uh, next year. I'm not I'm not saying 100 percent sure or anything like that, but um, I wouldn't put it I wouldn't put it past. Uh, let's talk real quick. I know we have to go to break in in a second. Um, well, I guess we'll, we'll go to break. But what I want to I, there's so much from both WrestleManias that we have to talk ahead, to. T- just tee it up, and we'll we'll talk about it on the way back. So I think we I think we have to start with you know what people are calling and and aptly titled. I want to start with the big three. We got to talk about the big three book because the big three came, and I'm not talking about Kendrick Cole and Drake. We have a new big three in the WWE. And I'm all here for it. I'm all here for the big three. So we'll, we'll get to WrestleMania night one and night two. But I think we do have to, to step away for a second. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. And it's Booker T, six-time world champion, my man Brad Gilmore from Manscaped. The performance package 5.0 Ultra is here. And let me tell you, it's got futuristic tendencies included in this bundle, guys. Brand new lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the weed whacker. 2.0 2.0 ear and nose and hair trimmer and essentials aftercare products like the crop soother, the ball after shave lotion, and the crop preserver, anti chafing ball deodorant, and two free gifts. Oh, yes! That's right, Book. Their fifth generation lawnmower features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. And did I mention it's waterproof too? Manscaped, they did us a favor, Book. All the listeners of the Hall of Fame, and they threw in two free gifts the Boxers 2.0 and the Shed 2.0 toiletry bag. Resolutions may come and go, but a well-groomed you is here to stay with Manscaped's latest and greatest. Yeah, and start the new year off right because when you look good, you feel good. Manscaped help you sculpt the best version of yourself for the year ahead. New year and new you and definitely a new trimmer. Manscaped, you got your grooming resolutions covered. Guys, get 20% off and free shipping with the code Booker at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at Manscaped.com. Use the code Booker. Happy New Year to your balls. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame. Um, talking WrestleMania XL went down this weekend, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I tell you, man, it was cold. It was cold in, in Philly. I, I'm, I'm glad I had um, menial duties uh, this um, WrestleMania. I didn't have a whole lot to do. I wasn't running around a whole lot like it was back in the day. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, just because uh, it, it could have been uh, much, much worse than it was. I, I, I had a rough week. Uh, but, but I'm going to tell you right now. My week 
in comparison to a lot of those young guys out there, it, it, it pales. It, it really does. Uh, I, I got a chance to see uh, Jay Cargill, and I know she had been running around like crazy. And Jay got a pretty smile, man, but, but her smile looked tired. You know what I mean? Just a smile. It just it was, it was a tight smile. You know what I'm serious? You know, because you working, man. You working, you owe, and you owe. And it's one of those things I always say, man, you you know, when the red light's on, you got to be on. And, and that's that's uh, uh, pretty often, you know. So I give those guys big, big props uh, for this, this, this WrestleMania week. All of those young guys, big props for getting through it. But now it's on the road to WrestleMania again, starting today. 41, man. Well, hey, I want to share this a little bit because for people who didn't get to see WrestleMania, this is on WWE's YouTube channel. The entrances this year were great. There were so many memorable entrances. Um, Drew and Seth, Cody and Roman last night. Um, Damage Control had a cool entrance. And so did what, what people are now calling the big three. Naomi, Bianca, Jade. You were just talking about Jade Cargill. Did you get to see their entrance? You know, for, I know you were running around um, at WrestleMania. They had this thing, I think you can see this, where they were levitating to see this match and see what they did. And Jade Cargill went out there and, and got her first victory in, in the WWE and along with Bianca, who's now undefeated at WrestleMania and Naomi being back. I'm a big fan of the big three. Now, someone you've always been a fan of, of, of two, both of these women, Becky Lynch, who you talked a lot about when she was down there in NXT, what she did. And then Rhea Ripley, I can go back two, three years ago where you were like, oh, Rhea Ripley, you, you may have called it before most people did when you were, this was maybe four years ago. I remember cause we were in Vegas be the, the weekend of the, uh, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight. So that was 2020. That's February of 2020. We were talking on the show and you were like Rhea Ripley. And she, I think just started to come up to the main roster. You're like, this is going to be the star of the women's division in the future. And she's solidifying herself in that role. Back-to-back -back wins at WrestleMania, Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. Um, what, what do you think of Rhea Ripley's ascent? And is she solidified as, as one of the top people in the company? Heck yeah, man. She's a star. I mean, she's, um, she's got that same quality, you know, as um, Jay Cargill, you know, uh, and, 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 and Naomi and um, you know um, Bianca Belair. I mean, I think she, I think she has that same quality. Um, someone who stands out. Someone when you see her, you go, man, and who is that? You know, when you when you see her walk through the airport, you know, and who's that? Who's that chick right there? You know, it's one of those type of deals. You know, I don't care if you saw her in the grocery store. You know, you go, go man, who is that? You know, so I think. Um, I think that's the that's what I thought the first time I saw Real Ripley was she had that it factor. Um, her wrestling was, you know, I wouldn't say it was the greatest or anything like that, but it was the worst. You could see that man. She had so much um, ability and so much growth, you know, in the in, in in that from that side. And and I and I really say when they put her with Judgment Day, I thought that was the one of the best thing they ever could have did for her because you know. For you know, for quite some time, she was like hiding in plain sight. She was learning at the same time. Um, she was growing into that star that I think she's become um, right now. Doing the stuff with Dominic, I, I think that helped so much with her. You know, so nah, man. I, I, for, for me, I just saw something. I saw a diamond in the rough when I first saw Real Ripley and. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not saying, you know, I got the, you know, the Midas touch as far as the eye goes, as far as talent goes, but, but, it, but with her, I definitely saw something. Yeah. And she went out there and like I said, defeated Becky Lynch to kick things off at WrestleMania. Um, I, and by the way, I heard Becky had, and this leads us as a rumor that she was having, uh, no, they even said on commentary, she was running like 101 fever and had strep throat during like the WrestleMania week. And still had to go out there and and open the show, open the entirety of WrestleMania, and put on a hell of a performance. So um, hopefully she's now recovering and getting some rest in. But that's um, I'm sure that's happened to you before, where you were feeling not so great, and you still had to go out there and get the job done. Show must go on, man. You know, migraine headaches. You know, whatever. You know, you got to suck it up, and you just got to go. 
get it done. Uh, if um, if Becky felt like she could go, I'm sure she was gonna go. I'm sure she felt like she if she couldn't go, she's still gonna go. That's just that's just Becky Lynch, man. She's the man. But uh, we gotta take a break, man. We gotta take a break. Stick around, guys. You are inside the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, dig it, sucker? Dig it, sucker. All right, everyone, it's Booker T and Brad Gilmore here, and we've got something exciting for all you sports, comedy, music, and theater fans out there. We're talking about game time, the fastest, easiest way to get your hands on tickets to your favorite events. That's right, Book. We love all those spontaneous, unforgettable moments, and game time is here to make them happen. Whether it's a last-minute decision to see a game or a sudden urge to catch a live show, game time has got you covered giving fans access to tickets even at the last minute in over 60 cities across the united states and canada hey guys this ain't about getting in this is about getting the best seats in the house with game time you can see images of your seat before you buy it so no surprises there guys you can score tickets swiftly skip the line guys just dive straight into the moment Absolutely. And listen to this. Game time guarantees the best prices. Find tickets in the same section in a row for less elsewhere. Game time will give you a credit of 110% of the difference. So there's no reason to wait. Bro. So whether it's the thrill of the game, the laughter of the comedy, the rhythm of the music, or the drama of the theater, guys, don't let the opportunity skip by. Choose game time. Grab your tickets and just enjoy the moment. Live should be spontaneous book. So guys, don't miss out check out game time now on their app or at gametime.co that's gametime.co take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time just download the game time app create an account and use the code booker for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply lowest price she got on d oh yes Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, man. I'm kicking out now, man. It seems like I'm kicking out. It seems like I'm beginning to get You're back. You're coming to my around, old, man. Back to my old self, man. You know, talking WrestleMania uh, and everything that went down. It was a hell of a hell of a weekend, man. Uh, but um, what should we uh, continue from, man? Let's let's keep breaking down a few things that were on the WrestleMania card. Obviously, um, I think that from the from night one, there's two other matches that we have to discuss. Obviously, the main event being one of them, but the other one. As was a straight up wrestling match, may have been the best match of the entire two nights, and if not, it's in the top two or three, which is in which was uh, Sami Zayn and Gunther for the Intercontinental yeah. Championship. Sami Zayn went out there and and defeated the undefeatable uh, Gunther, um, who had a six hundred and sixty six day reign, the longest reign in the history of the Intercontinental Championship, and it ended at WrestleMania. Sami Zayn is a guy who last year WrestleMania won the tag team championships, had a groundswell of support behind him going up against Roman. If you remember in, uh, were they in Montreal? I think for, for one of the, one of the, uh, pay-per-views last year where it felt like I think it was elimination chamber where it felt like maybe he was going to do it and then didn't get the job done, but then went out here and biggest stage of all WrestleMania 40 won the intercontinental championship against Gunther. Um, do you think that that was the right call? Yeah, heck yeah. Um, I thought uh, he was the right guy for the match. I know a lot of people was talking about Chad Gable. Should have been in that spot. That should have been Chad Gable's spot. Chad Gable should have been the one. I've, I've seen a lot of that. You know, but uh, for me, I, I thought Sami Zayn was the right guy for the job. You know, he's that ultimate underdog. He's a guy that definitely makes you feel something when he's in there performing. You know, he... he he puts it, it's like when you, the old saying, wearing your heart on your sleeve. That's, that's, that's Sami Zayn. Uh, it really is. Um, and a guy that works at a very, very high level. Just think about the uh, Sami Zayn that we've been watching over the last, I don't know what, 10 years or so. Um, the, 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 that baby face that, that used to be jumping through the, the ring post, you know, you remember that guy? Yeah. Yeah, compared to this guy that we're watching now, who um, I think really uh, was in was a part of one of the you know coolest angles with the bloodline, and I thought he really made that that storyline work. Um, 
he's that ultimate utility guy. He really is. Sami Zayn is that ultimate utility guy that you can put in any position and he's going to go out there and do whatever the hell he possibly can to make it work. You know, so for me, Sami Zayn, it was, he was the right guy. And I'm going to tell you, that match, you know, it wasn't the world title or anything like that. But um, toppling um, Gunther, you know, for the Intercontinental Championship after Gunther's reign that he had, you know, breaking the Honky Tonks man record after he stood for so many years. That match solidified Sami Zayn for the rest of his career. He's a made man now. He's a made man. When this thing's over with, he's not going to have to worry about anything just because of that match and that performance and winning that title on that stage at WrestleMania 40. He's a made man. He really is. Man, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think it was the right call to do. And the thing with Gunther is, man, I think he he's ready for the next title. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's where, and that's what's so incredible right now about WWE, where maybe seven, eight years ago, you had a clear distinction between the guys who were on the very top, which there were very few, and then everybody else. You know what I mean? That's what it felt like for a while. You had your main top guys, and everyone else just kind of filtering somewhere in there in the middle, and no one felt as special as almost everyone on the roster does now. If you go through the WrestleMania card, everybody who was on the show you cared or felt some way about, which is very difficult. You know, And it, that's why I think so many people are saying this is a new era and are comparing it to the Attitude Era because Attitude Era had the similar thing of, Everyone who came through the curtain, you felt a certain way about him. It's the same thing here. And with Gunther, he's he's going to be added to that main event scene, which is very plentiful right now. It's very fruitful. And, man, would I love to see Gunther battling Cody? Yeah. Would I love to see Gunther battling Drew or Damian Pre? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's so yeah. many places that he can go. And he is a, a generational talent who is uh, legitimate, believable, uh, I bet you people would be afraid to walk up to him in an airport at baggage claim. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not asking for a photo from that guy. <laughs> he might uh, kill me. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely got that feeling, um, that feeling um, from, from back in the day, you know, as far as guys uh, that come out of that curtain, they're stars, you know, I, I used to say, man, every, every guy that used to come out of that curtain back in the day, they felt like they were a star. I, and, and I always uh, refer to, you know, Hercules Hernandez. Man, I, I felt like Hercules Hernandez could have been the world heavyweight champion with no problem. You know, he never never got to that point or anything, but he was just that big of a star for me uh, uh, back in the day. And now we're getting back to that point, you know, where just like, say, for instance, watching, I mean, I know we're going to talk about him here in a minute, but watching the growth of Damian Priest, you know, from when he first came into WWE until, you know, now, you know, um, I, I think, I think Damian Priest needed that, that rub. I think Damian Priest needed that time to grow and mature. You know, I look at guys like, you know, like Ricochet, you know, when he first came in and, and, and I, and I watched, you know, him then and then I watch him now, you know, um, uh, Finn Balor, I remember when he first came in, and I remember, it, you know, he was he was he was he was a star on the Indies. Everybody knew who Finn Balor was, but when he came to WWE, he kind of kind of washed out a little bit. Even though he had the demon character, it still was hard for him to get over. And now I look at the maturity of him over these last few years, and man, Finn Balor just goes out and beat the hell out of guys. Now he's it's, he's his best version of himself. What we, what I'm talking about is WWE now is is, is I think has, has created more stars. Yeah. these past few years than anything. And they've been doing it very, very methodically without actually uh, just throwing it out there, throwing it out there, and, you know, and uh, trying to shove it down people's throats or anything like that, giving the fans a chance to actually really grow with these guys the way they grew with us back in the day. And I appreciate that. I think you nailed it. You absolutely nailed why everyone feels more special now. And, and everyone is, has risen to a higher level, Gunther included, and we are going to talk about Damian Priest, but we have to talk about that main event from night one, man. Cody and Seth versus Roman and The Rock. They went book the official time. This is without entrances, which were like at least 20 minutes, if we're being honest. Like, they were very long. 
But uh, they went 44 minutes and 35 seconds. It ended with The Rock giving Cody Rhodes a rock bottom and people's elbow for the one, two, three, which helped uh, usher in bloodline rules match for the next night. Um, The Rock looked slimmer. It looked like he had dropped some weight. It looked like his gas tank was pretty much there. You know, there were some spots where he definitely wanted to, uh, to, you know, take it slow because they were going so long. But man, af- after not having a full length match for what did they say, 12 years or something like that? Um, 11 years. He looked like he could still go. You know, he looked good and, and the match was great. And I think it would be hard to have a bad match with those four guys involved in it. But um, the match was great. And the, and, I this is what I honestly thought. I honestly thought the Rock was going to kind of be in there, come in for a couple tags, tag out, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Not do a whole hell of a lot. But I heard he did like a twelve week, twelve week training camp where he had, you know, we were just talking like the Gallus boys the other day. They, I think they were the ones working with him in his training camp, from what I read, in uh, Hawaii and in uh, Florida, and really making sure that he was primed and ready for that tag match and. um you know what? All parties involved put on a great showing and a great main event tonight. One. Okay, uh, that's what the Gallus boys been, huh? Yeah, helping okay. out, helping out the Rock, helping getting them ready. Rock. Okay, getting them uh, ready. Okay, special and, he, and he looked great. Special, special, special treatment. Hey, look, man! Now, now they got the rug. They got the Rock rug. Okay, all they, right. They, they're looking to make it to the main roster. Look like you, <laughs> right? Hey, look. Okay. Look, sometimes okay. you got to go over Shawn Michaels' head and, and Triple H's head. You got to go to the final boss. You know what I mean? See if you can get get on the main roster. It's messed up, man. It's messed but, up. But Brock Rock, Rock looked great, and you know what? Um, I know we talked about it before WrestleMania, but the, his decision or the decision, rather, to pivot from Roman and Rock as the main event, which they went on to admit this week during media, that was the planned main event. They were going to do Rock versus Roman. And it was Rock who called Triple H and said, look, man, the fans aren't into this. We got to make a change. What if What if I went heel? What do you think of that? And that decision, the fact that everyone was on and game for it, was the best decision they could have made for this night one main event of WrestleMania. Because um, it, it lived up to the hype. It definitely lived up to the hype. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I actually think I said something like that probably happened. I don't know if you remember, but I think I said something exactly like that probably happened. And he was probably the one who had to wherewithal and say, look, guys, let's let's fix this. You know, and a lot of guys would have went on with the program just because they were going to be in the main event. You know, that, and they were going to be, you know, getting the main event check. You know, so I I, uh, I appreciate uh, Rock for uh, making the right call on that one because I, I do think he made the right call. He did make the right call on that. Make making it Cody versus Roman, and then Cody actually finishing the story. Great story. Stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a momento. Two long years I've waited for my return. Two long years I've been training, growing, and doing whatever it takes to get better, to become faster, stronger, Deadlier. Finally, I make my return to reality of wrestling. The last time I came, I plowed my way through. This time, I'm coming for a fight. So be prepared. My name is Shauna, and I come with the spirits of the Pahlawan Malayu flowing through my veins, and I shall lay waste to anyone who stands in my way. And this is a prophecy. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame. Just talking a little WrestleMania. Moving on to night two now, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show us just a few highlights here, though, of the uh, main event as we talk about night two. I wanted to just say this one thing about The Rock. The, the thing that Rock is always uh, the thing is you freeze that um you, oh. that's right you, you, i was just gonna say uh, from that moment right there um that moment right there the one thing um you got to look at is look at the fans mm-hmm. everybody's on their feet right there 
everybody's standing up. Everybody's, you know, into this match. And uh, that's that's what that's what it's about. It's about taking those fans on a on a roller coaster. On a WrestleMania, which set the which set the table for night two. Now, everyone since they've gone to this two night WrestleMania have always said, okay, what's better, night one or night two? Night one or night two? Normally, from WrestleMania 37, 38, and 39, night one was better. Pretty much every every year, everyone would say night one got it, night one got it, night one got it, night one got it. Um, to me, this year was the first year that night two of WrestleMania outshone night one, and it and it started with Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship, and Drew has made himself into uh, the best version of the Drew McIntyre character that we've ever seen with this kind of social media troll is what he's really been, and he's been fixated on CM Punk, a lot of it, and CM Punk was out there for commentary to do during this match, and Drew would shoot a lot of shots over there at CM Punk. Now, Drew McIntyre ends up defeating Seth Rollins in the opening match for the World Heavyweight Championship, which we should say, first of all, I was really happy for Drew because he got to hold that world title up in front of 72,000-plus people, something that he did not get to do at WrestleMania 36 when he won the world title in front of no people and kind of finally got that moment. Don't you think that meant something for him to hold that title up in front of 70,000 people? Uh, I guess. You don't think so? I mean, you know, it's bittersweet. Because he's about to lose it? Yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> but at least he got the moment. You say it's always about moments. I mean, you he know, got then, his moment. And then he got another notch on the belt as well. Got another notch on three-time world champion. Exactly. You know what I mean? So that right there, pad the uh, stats is something, you know, uh, that was an easy way to pad the stats. You know, no one's, you know, people are going to remember it, but, you know, you could easily make your, your way back from that. That loss right there was um, a cash-in or something like that because you've gone through a grueling match. Any, it's, it's one of those things to where I say when the fans believe it, that it could happen to anybody, it could happen to them. That those are the best stories. So that right there, Drew can easily come back and win the world title, and you know, be right back in the saddle, and he'll be four time world champion. Yeah, man. So, um, so yeah, and then, but then, right, right after that, though, he couldn't, he couldn't take, um, he couldn't, you know, just take the title and 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 walk away. You know what I mean? He couldn't just take the title and walk away. He had to go chirp with CM Punk. Couldn't he couldn't get his mind off of CM Punk, and that's what did him in. And Damian Priest ends up winning the world championship after cashing in. People were talking about, are we got, are we, are we ever going to see this cash in? This man's held this briefcase forever, and uh, he did. He finally did. <laughs> he cashed it in, and he's now the world heavyweight champion. You were just talking about what it meant for you know the judgment. Really, the judgment day elevated everybody in that group to a new level. Um, and I remember you and I had a debate about it. To where I thought when Edge left the Judgment Day, I said this is just going to be a middle of the of the card faction that's not really ever going to do much. That's what I thought, and you're like, I don't know, maybe Edge leaving was the best thing that could happen, you know, because now these guys kind of get the light shown on them and not kind of shown behind Edge. It's kind of the sentiment you had, and boy, man, um, was that not the case? Because you look at Rhea Ripley. Hotter than she's ever been. Finn Balor, probably best of his career. Uh, J.D. McDonough is now getting the rub from these guys. Uh, D Dominic coming into his own as a heel, getting the, probably some of the loudest reactions ever. And now, Damian Priest. Damian Priest is the new world heavyweight champion. What do you Crazy, think? Man. Crazy. And the, first, yeah. I think the first Puerto Rican champion in WWE in 35 years since Pedro Morales? Well, I... Uh... After uh, night one, I um, was at the restaurant and Damien was in there and uh, I said, what's up, man? You know, he said, what's up? I said, man, you ready? He goes, yeah, man, I'm ready, man. Uh, even though, you know, nobody was going to do anything like that, I said, man. And I was just talking to Damien as far as his growth um, since he had first came into WWE. I said, man, you've grown so much, man. And, you know, um, he's really become that player and that star you know, that I think WWE expected him to be for a, a long time. And he's, he really grew into it. He really um, 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 took it to that level. And I, and, I, and, I, and I was just messing around, and I go, you ready to cash in? 
He goes, yeah, man, I'm ready to cash in. You know, but I swear, I was just messing around. I was just playing with him. And it seemed like, uh, boo, how it come to fruition like that? It's kind of crazy, you know what I mean? Because I swear to God, I was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was playing around with him. I was serious, but I wasn't expecting it, you know, or anything like that. And boom, for it to happen, I was like, wow, man, what a moment for Damian Priest. Yeah, I thought it was great. And I was reading online. Now you never know what's real and what's not on, on the internet, but that some were saying that he was told kind of minutes before that it was officially going to go down. Yeah. And so um, I'm sure that's quite the rush of your back there. But, you know, I'm sure you got an idea. Like when they come to you, be like, hey, man, you got your gear? <laughs> You're probably thinking something might be about to happen. <laughs> you know, something's yeah, about to happen. Tell you, hey, just bring your gear just in case. Just in case, you know, we, yeah. need, we need you for something, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come dressed actually. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's, come dressed just in case, you know what I mean? Just in case we need, <laughs> yeah. um, but he went out there and won it. And, um, I gotta say, man, uh, so at the press conference, Todd looks good around his shoulder. Looks hey, man. Good. Yeah. He's carrying it. Like I say there again, um, just like what we were just talking about, WWE is creating stars, you know, uh, normally when you get the title, you're a made man. You know, you get in the rub. You know, you're part of the club. You know, you you're big league. You're a lister now. You you you're in the big leagues. That's normally what that means. You know, so for um, Damian Priest to um, get that stamp of approval that he is now bona fide star, um, WWE superstar. Um, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving you know the the uh, you know the. the the, the creations of you know the talent nowadays you know because at one point in time it seemed like like you said it was about five guys that was on the roster the randy ardens you know the such and such and this it was only a few of yeah. them that you could really go to and now it's definitely expanding and we're seeing stars being created on a regular basis so i'm loving it. yeah and uh damien priest like you said submitting himself and having just the second person to ever cash in at wrestlemania the last one being nine years ago, Seth Rollins. He did it famously in the main event of, of that year's WrestleMania. So yeah. he's, uh, he's the, you know, Judgment Day walking around with the big golds on their shoulder on, on him and on Rhea. And hey, by the way, when you see that big gold belt, even though it's a different look from the one you had, does it like give you like nostalgia vibes at all? Do you like, oh man, yeah, that's a world heavyweight championship? It feels like the gold belt. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, actually, I was doing a signing down and, um, uh, in Philly um, over the week. And, uh, they were, and I was signing some of the replicas of the big gold. And uh, I snatched one up. <laughs> <laughs> you took one? Yeah, man. I got a brand new gold, big gold replica. You got to see it. It's sweet. It's, it's sweet. the one you had or the new that's, one? That's what I had. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about bending the top of it just so it can feel <laughs> like it. Stick around, guys. <laughs> You're in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> we'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, dig it dig sucker? It, sucker. Yeah. And this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, let's talk about it. Let's talk about sex. Hey, you remember when you was always ready to go? I'm talking about strapping the rocket on it, man. Going straight to the moon. I'm talking about getting it done. If you want that extra confidence, I got something for you. Listen up, Blue Chew. Dot com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at the fraction of the cost. But the great thing, Book, is you can take it any time, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, You'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, guys, it's all done online on the internet. So there's no doctor's visit, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at a pharmacy or any of that. And the thing is, book Blue Chew's tablets, they're made right here in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package so no one is the wiser. You know, let's just get it out there, guys. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. It, it's like this. Chew it, 
and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew absolutely free when you use promo code Booker at your checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping, man. That's BlueChew.com. Use promo code Booker to receive your first month absolutely free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And, you know, we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the Hall of Fame podcast. Chew it and do it. Boom. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame. And we're getting close to wrapping this thing up. So we got to speed this thing up just a little bit. So let's just keep it rolling. All right. Uh, we're going to get to Super Chats here in a second. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll talk more about WrestleMania of the card later on, maybe in the week. But let's talk about the main event. Main event went down. It was Cody Rhodes. It was Roman Reigns. It was Bloodline Rules for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. Um, this was a crazy match. Uh, it was crazy. It was normal for like the first 25 minutes, and then shenanigans started happening. You see uh, Jimmy Uso come in and super kick Cody. So then what happens? The Yeet Man comes through. Jay Uso comes. They have another scrap between each other as they did the night before. Then they, boom, off the side of the stage, like an eight-foot drop through a couple tables. I hope they're okay. It was a hell of a bump. You're thinking, what the hell was that that just happened? And then, uh, next thing you know, match goes on. Solo Sokoa comes in, makes his impression felt. Does the same finish almost that they had at WrestleMania 39. Cody Rhodes finds a way to kick out. And just as Solo is going to do something else, you can't see him. You know, John Cena comes running down to the ring. He and Solo Sokoa recently having a beef with one another. Uh, Solo Sokoa beating John Cena in John Cena's last singles match that he had on television. So he comes in, gives uh, uh, Roman Reigns an AA. Solo Sokoa is out on the floor, gives Solo Sokoa AA through the Spanish announce table. It's craziness happening right now at WrestleMania. It's pandemonium. You think maybe Cody's finally got it, but then whose music hits? If you smell what The Rock is cooking and The Rock comes right back, the final boss is in there trying to get things done against Cody. And then this was the, the one that threw us for a curveball. The Shields music plays and Seth Rollins comes back out dressed in the Shield gear and looked like he even may have dyed his hair uh, to do this, by the way. Like, I don't know when he did had time to do that between the beginning of the show and the end of the show. But his hair was dyed like it was used to be done. And uh, he comes out. now. And, and the thing is, I don't know what was going on with Seth. Some people said that he may have been a little banged up after his match, you know, back-to-back -back nights. But he didn't get any offense in. Roman Reigns, boom, hits him with a punch, lays Seth out. Seth had a chair with him, lays Seth out. So now The Rock's really about to take control until the lights go out. You hear the gong. The lights come back up. It's The Undertaker in the middle of the ring. He takes the rock by the throat, choke slams the rock. Lights go back out. Solo's gone. Cena's gone. Rock's gone. Taker's gone. The gong got them all out of there. But Seth Rollins is still laying there in the middle of the ring. And this was a beautiful moment, though, because Cody's selling up on the ropes. Seth is doing the same. And Roman picked up the chair, and he looked like he wanted to hit Cody with it. But then he saw Seth there in the shield gear. And if you remember, it was Seth who hit Roman in the back with the chair to break up the shield 10 years ago. And they pay off that story 10 years later by Roman Reigns seeing a moment of, of vengeance and getting his revenge on Seth Rollins for turning his back on him. And he hits Seth with the chair instead of Cody. Seth falls out. And then that is really what led up to Roman Reigns' demise where he gets caught with the three crossroads. One, two, three. Cody Rhodes is the new WWE champion, and he finished his story with the locker room coming out, L.A. Knight, <clears throat> Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, John Cena's out there to celebrate. Uh, Cody calls out Triple H and Bruce Pritchard to come celebrate with him as well, and um, a great time was had by all. And it, you know, the last thing that I think that anybody saw from Roman was uh and I you know what this was on social media I think we can share this here this was on WWE social media this was Roman Reigns leaving the arena and you see him and Paul Heyman having an embrace there on the top of the stage they said that Roman kind of bust into tears 
you know, because this was a near four year reign, 1300 plus days coming to an end at WrestleMania, finishing the story. Book, I mean, WWE does it big. They go over the top. They do it XL, extra large. It is the XL era. Um, what do you think about your man, Cody Rhodes, finishing that story and um, winning the championship that his father never got to? I mean, no. The story is uh, complete. Uh, it's great to see Cody finish the story. But that's that shot right there, you know, at the end with uh, Roman and Paul Heyman. You know, people can say what they want to say about wrestling, you know, is it you know being real and whatnot, you know, but that that's the part that's real that, that, that it possibly could be right there. That part right there is real as it possibly can be because that's been a that's been a hell of a rain. It's been a hell of a hell of a number that that Roman Reign put up right there. And, and, and that comes with a lot of trial and tribulations, man. That comes with being the guy, you know, every single night in the ring as well as out of the ring. It's so much comes with that job right there. And there's something that he's going to remember for the rest of his life. Is it real to Roman? You damn right it is. As real as it possibly could be. You know what I mean? So for people that really do not understand, truly understand that that's a moment that cannot even be described. It's indescribable, really, what what um, Roman has done. But um, as far as um, Cody, um, there's something that, you know, I, I think Cody was already a made man, but I think this right here is definitely going to solidify him as far as the, you know, the guy that finished that story. This is something that uh, he's not going to have to, you know, look back and wonder and, and wish he could have been able to achieve and, and doing the WWE. He's done it. Um, I think that right there is a testament to the hard work in the WWE, WWE as well as outside of the WWE when he was working on the independent scene. Just, you know, because, like I said, Cody's a guy that was born into this business, He's a, a, a kid that was born in, into the WWE. I don't think Cody had to actually go out there and do the indies. <laughs> and he would have still had a job for the rest of his life, but he wanted to prove that he was just as big of a star that anybody that ever put on a pair of boots if given a chance. So big props, big ups to Cody Rhodes for not just finishing, but um, weathering the storm. Yeah. What do you, um, when you, when you see Roman and, you know, we have super chats to read and we will we'll probably talk more about this on the next show, but um, John Cena did Pat McAfee's show today and he called Roman Reigns after Roman Reigns had a, 1,316 day run as the WWE Universal Champion. Nine, nine WrestleMania main events. Nine, the most of all time. He called Roman Reigns the greatest of all time. That's what John Cena said. He said, I believe Roman Reigns is the greatest of all time. Now, obviously, that's all up to the beholder. But do you think when all said and done, 10, 15 years from now, we're talking about the Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling? Roman Reigns' face, does it have to be on there? Uh, you know what, man? That's that's something for the fans to decide. You know, yeah. I, I think Roman's great, but um, uh, that's something, you know, that's going to always be debatable. Yeah, it's so hard, yeah. you know, but I think that he's definitely in the conversation. Yeah. He's in the conversation as one of, one of the greats. Just for this, just for this run alone, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Just for this bloodline run alone and everything that he got to do with it. And then for it to culminate at WrestleMania 40, with Cody finishing his story, it was poetry emotion. We have some super chats here, book. Um, let's go through them real quick. Most of them are comments, not questions. Dan Tana says, What's up, fellas? WrestleMania 40 was definitely top three WrestleMania of all time. Love mm. your content. Wow, top three. That's that's pretty big. That's pretty big. But like I said, um, just sit back and watch and wait and and and, and let these guys produce. And hopefully you um, see a great show. They've been doing a, a hell of a lot of that lately. This is from James Foreman, who says, how come Book didn't jump in to help Cody? You, you know what I always say. Concern yourself with business that concern you. That's right. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Foley. <laughs> Mr. Foley. Uh, John JID999. Absolutely love Thunderbolt Patterson's Hall of Fame speech. Happy he was able to get up there and spread the word. His yeah, faith man. is clearly important to him. We went to church Absolutely. with Thunderbolt Patterson, man. We went to church. You know, everybody that um, didn't get a chance to see Thunderbolt's speech, go back and check it out. You might get something out of it. Let's see. This comes from Cali Toenail. 
Best WrestleMania in three years, hands down, starting with the Paul Heyman speech. NXT was fire, and thank God no more tribal cheat. Miss Nia, but no complaints. Yeah, tribal chief is no more. It was a great WrestleMania. I mm -hmm. think it's in the conversation. Kicking it off with um, NXT, definitely great move. Yeah. King J. Sean says, no disrespect to Taker, but if Stone Cold interfered and gave The Rock a stunner with a complimentary middle finger, this place would have erupted thoughts. We all thought that it was going to be Austin. I'll be honest with you. I mean, that would have Everyone... been a great. That would have been a great move too. I mean, it would have been great. Um, but Taker um, definitely uh, popped the crowd. Yeah, Taker. I mean, the gong and the lights—they always, they always do it. You know, and oh, take yeah. take being at WrestleMania also has a different feel. It would have been great to see Austin to have Austin Rock face off in Philadelphia, where they had their first WrestleMania main event oh, against man. each other oh, at WrestleMania 15. Day. Yeah. Oh, it's been awesome. Um, this one also comes from King J. Sean says, I'll send you an authentic Dave Melican big gold belt. Hey, man, or, send, send it over, bro. I appreciate it. I, I definitely King, uh, I yeah. represent it, put it up in my office. King King uh, J. Sean, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll get you that mailing address, uh, at Brad Gilmore on Twitter. And then our final one says, from uh, DJ1491, how, oh, how do you feel about AEW airing the CM Punk footage? Well, I think we got to see what they air first. Because I mean, if they're... If, you know what, if they, air, if they air something about CM Punk, you know, I, I think it would be... I think it would really be low class if they did. I mean, the best response is no response to what, what, what CM Punk said. Um, but to, to do that, I think you're just adding fuel to the fire. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be 100% wrong, but... Uh, the best response in this situation is no response. So we'll see. We'll see exactly what it is. I think it's looking at the past when you should be looking toward the future. Yeah. And exactly. I think it's I think it's uh, petty yeah. and silly. But exactly. we'll see what they do. Yeah. We'll see what they do. But book, I mean, look, that's it. That's it. I got to get out of here, man. I got NXT, man. I got to get out of here. I got to get got to get ready. I got to pack. Got to get my all, everything. I'm talking. When I say everything, I mean everything. I got to get it ready. But I want to thank everybody for stepping inside the Hall of Fame today. Get your champagne, which. Caviar dreams, man. Uh, Brad, as always, for all the heavy lifting. We appreciate you. But right now, peace. We out.